Hello. Welcome to Substrate Integrated Circuits, a paradigm for megahertz to terahertz electronics and photonics with KWU. I'm Mike Hamilton, your host for this IEEE Microwave Theory and Technique Society webcast, which is sponsored by National Instruments. Before we start, I'll mention a few housekeeping items. First, this presentation will be archived. The recording should be posted approximately 24 hours after we finish the presentation. We'll send all registrants an email when the archived webinar goes up so you can revisit it or share with your colleagues. Second, we encourage questions. We will answer them after the talk, but you can submit them at any time during the discussion. Enter them in the Q&A box on the left side of the webcast window, and please don't forget to click Submit. Third, some words about the interface. You can enlarge slides by clicking on the green rectangle at the top right of the slide area. If you're listening over your computer speakers, you can adjust the volume in the media player area at the upper left of the screen. Remember, you may also need to adjust your system's master volume. The icons at the bottom of the webinar include uh, a file folder where you can download a copy of the slides. Now let's introduce our speaker. Dr. K. Wu is Professor of Electrical Engineering at the Ecole Polytechnic in the University of Montreal. Dr. K. Wu holds the Canada Research Chair in RF and Millimeter Wave Engineering. He is also the NSERC Huawei Endowed Industrial Research Chair in Future Wireless Technologies. He has been the Director of the Polygram Research Center and the Founding Director of the Center for Radio Frequency Electronics Research of Quebec. He held or holds visiting and honorary professorships at various universities around the world. He has authored or co-authored over 1,100 refer referred papers and a number of books and book chapters and is responsible for more than 40 patents. Dr. Wu was the general chair of the 2012 IEEE MTTS International Microwave Symposium. He is also the 2016 president of the IEEE Microwave Theory and Technique Society. He serves as the inaugural North American representative in the General Assembly of the European Microwave Association. Over the years, he has been the recipient of many awards and prizes, including the inaugural MTTS Outstanding Young Engineer Award, the, I, the 2014 IEEE MTTS Microwave Application Award, and numerous, uh, numerous others. In fact, too many to name in this short introduction. He was an IEEE MTTS Distinguished Microwave Lecturer from 2009 to 2011. Dr. K who is a fellow of the IEEE, a fellow of the Can Canadian Ac Academy of Engineering, and a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. So now it's my pleasure to turn the virtual podium over to Dr. K. Wu for Substrate Integrated Circuits, a paradigm for megahertz to terahertz electronics and photonics. Okay? Thank you very much, Mike. It's uh, very nice to hear from you. Hello to everyone. So welcome to this uh, similar presentation. I'm very pleased to present uh, the uh, substrate integrated circuits. Uh, the, I want to talk about what's the really future behind this, and also want to see what is really the challenge and the opportunity we have in the uh, you know in many years to come. Um, well, actually, now I have a problem here. So, um, so the. Well, do you need for me to advance the slides, Kay? I can't. Okay, I, I can advance the slides for you if needed. Okay, so now, okay, let's start, okay. So the, uh, well, let's see, uh, okay. I'm coming back, okay. So the, uh, well, as you see that to the, uh, 
From this outline, I'm going to talk about real easy problem associated with current technology, uh, namely uh, current Planet Tech 9 technology, and what, why we need uh, for a compact low loss, low, the low cost, the integrated circuits, and particularly integrated waveguide and the circuits, which is actually building blocks of all the uh, you know, current technology, particularly integrate, integration technology, and talk about the, what's really uh, the, uh, what's going on with current the integration and miniaturization issue there. We we'll come down to this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the emerging technology called the substrate, substrate integrated circuits. And uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the detail of the substrate integrated circuits and then the, uh, the uh, of course, we'll show a few interesting examples and we'll talk about the state of the art uh, regarding the uh, development of this technology. And finally, we'll show some of the interesting uh, the, uh, possibilities there. Of course, behind there's a lot of challenge. The, well, if you look at the introduction slides here, and we can see that the uh, future, actually, if you look at the, uh, the all wireless functionalities, I could summarize the wireless technology can be, which can be enabled by three of uh, the functions. One is data communications. Of course, we can see that today through the wireless phone, everything, the wireless connected through the uh, communications. Uh, sometimes we do use the uh, wireless for the sensing, uh, such as the radar application, for example, and also other sensor uh, the, uh, applications. And, uh, the, uh, and also, uh, the very interesting things coming, which we call the wireless power, that's uh, very important. And if you combine those three functions together uh, through wireless techniques, we can see that there are a lot of interplay, and also we can create a lot of the mutual uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, penetration and the mutual the, uh, the, uh, uh, actions, which is, can create a lot of interesting functionalities in the future, for example. And now, of course, what we are facing is really create a cost-effective and efficient technology. And, uh, but regarding the future system integrations and architecture unification, for example, one of the things which are facing today is really the global integration. The global integration means that the circuits, antenna, and the packaging cannot be separated. For example, when the frequency goes up, you cannot separate circuits, antenna anymore. And basically, you, you are basically dealing with the, uh, all kind of the so-called the, uh, you know, the, um, the design, core design issue there. And at the frequency, for example, the, at the millimeter wave, for example, circuit antenna actually, actually should be treated together. And circuits could be, could be part of antenna, antenna could be part of circuits. Then the, regarding planar integrations, for example, if you look into the building blocks like microstrip line, coupon wave guide, we can see there are a lot of the uh, problems associated with this. Of course, everybody knows the loss is a big issue there. And even though the uh, integration uh, density can be very high, but actually the packaging is a big problem. Sometimes circuits, the, when you design circuits, packaging could be much more expensive than circuits. The, the problem behind this is because if you look into the, um, the structures, there's really the good and bad and ugly aspects. If you look at circuits, there's a strong, if you just slice, for example, slice the, the cross sections, you can see that the, along the central conductors of micro triple line, you can see the very strong current density along the two open edges. This is a really big problem because you can see this is a so-called field singularity or current singularity. This current singularity actually creates a lot of problems when you design circuits because when you design circuits, you have the discontinuities and you have bands. This discontinuity, because of this current singularity, they create a lot of radiation problem and also mode conversion problem along the substrates. So this is also a major problem for the high conductor loss, which is actually much more pronounced at high frequency. And so the, if you, on the other hand, the Tongue wave guy is very popular, very good. And this is one of the uh, major, the, uh, you know, the uh, so-called high-performance uh, the transmission line, which has been used in Iowa space, many of the uh, conservative industry, which are still prefer the waveguide because they can deliver the performance we need. But uh, this is a structure which cannot be used for integration. Okay, we know that. And if you look at the performance gap between both 
mainstream technologies, unfortunately, there's really the uh, big gap, at the same time, the bigger cost gap there too. So uh, how we can really build up, take advantage of both sides? Well, we, we want to do something, you know, the, there. The current technology is really the, uh, looks very ugly. For example, integration. If you integrate pan circuits, wave guide together, you have to use this probe or rich type. Well, they have three problems. Mechanically, uh, thermally, electrically, it's really, you know, create a big challenge between these two uh, mainstream technologies because of the are not compatible in those three aspects. So looking to the evolution of the microwave and millimeter wave technology, I have one single slide here to show globally what it looks like. The first generation basically is really the, uh, the so-called bulky waveguide or the three-dimensional circuits. I call these three-dimensional circuits called the um, three-dimensional circuits, but the one dimension, uh, three-dimensional structures, but the one-dimensional circuits, because the structure is still behind one-dimensional. On the other hand, the, the micro line bring up the possibility of integration. That's really second generation, I consider. And third generation, of course, you can see the, you can integrate all those passive circuits into substrates through the multi-layer, and some of the passive circuits, such as resistors, can be part of the substrates. And you get a higher density. And sometimes, fourth generation, for, for example, it's very easy just stuck them. On the other hand, during the third generation development, we have used semiconductor to do the job. And of course, semiconductor allows us to create active circuits. So that's very good. The interesting thing is that the fourth generation, just the uh, three dimension, the vertical, the integration of the, uh, the third generation circuits. And you can create a lot of interesting uh, platform there, such as LTCC, MMIC, MAMS, IPIC, those kind of structures. But if you look at it from first generation to fourth generation, basically you can see the density of integration become higher and higher. At the same time, the, all the structure, basically, if you starting from second generation to fourth generation, we have been using always the micro line. Of course, you have the Kuplan wave guide after that. And, uh, but the waveguide was ignored uh, from these integrations. So I will consider this from second generation, fourth generation. The integration really was, has been made thanks to the processing technique, industry processing technique, which is not really the, you know, the academic, uh, academia you know, contributions from the, uh, the structure point of view, but definitely a lot of the modeling aspects involved. So what's the next? So we can see that the, Today, this is a typical uh, microwave millimeter integrated circuits. You can see there are some interesting uh, the, uh, the feature there. Basically, today everybody talk about the through second via, for example, for IF application. At same time, you have the uh, all kind of multi-layer process, which allows you to do all kind of integrations, and uh, which uh, in, uh, you know, the so the uh, through silicon via basically is the physical contact between layer to layer through the uh, the uh, metallic uh, you know the structures, and same time you have other feed through like electromagnetic coupling for example. Um, so just about 2011 November 2011, I uh, the uh, Micro Magazine actually published um, a very interesting article about uh, talking about the future uh, ten technology. Uh, the uh, you know the uh, in, 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 which could change the future of the uh, design of the passive and, and the control components. And actually, it's surprisingly, uh, it's very interesting to see that the uh, the first ranking number one is the uh, substrate integrated circuits or substrate integrated waveguide. What do you mean substrate integrated waveguide? Well, this is a typical uh, or sometimes they call a popular substrate integrated waveguide. You can see that the, uh, in this case, the waveguide, which usually is non-planar structures or bulky non-planar uh, geometry, it can be synthesized into planar form. For example, these structures, the, you can see substrate integrated waveguide, which is a mimic the, uh, the geometry of the waveguide, the rectangular waveguide, into the substrates through this, uh, the, uh, the uh, two metallic via fabrication process. We can see clearly that the Substrate integrated guide uh, can be formed into the planar uh, substrates, and in this case, so this is a, looks like the integration waveguide into substrates. At the same time, 
other known planet structures such as the non-radiative dietary waveguide, which is actually a dietary waveguide, or even image waveguide, like a dietary image waveguide, can be also synthesized into the uh, planet form, the planet of the geometry. So the, uh, this is, of course, things that we can synthesize those planet structure, uh, the known planet structures in planet form. So basically, this allows us to take advantage of all, all those electrical behavior of the non-planet structures through the planet fabrication process. This is very important. So non-planet structures in planet form allows us to use of all the current processing technique to design the planalized uh, the, uh, the waveguide. So you can see that this, if you look at the comparison of those kind of different types of structures, the, the synthesized uh, the uh, uh, substitute integral waveguide, which looks quite similar to max strip line or Kupin waveguide, but the level less, these structures actually share the performance of the waveguide. The uh, particular factor, the, 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 the Q factor, for example, is much better than the, the micro triple line and Kupin waveguide, roughly 10 times higher than the micro triple line and Kupin waveguide. Uh, about uh, the, uh, also, uh, much of course, so, should be lower than the metallic waveguide because the presence of the uh, metallic, um, the uh, thin metallic, uh, the uh, substrate, the uh, thin substrate layer, and also the uh, presence of the dietary substrates, which is actually, uh, you know, could, could be lost in materials. Well, that's the, uh, this slide shows that the, you know, our today's publication. Okay, if you look at the, uh, the publication trends, in the Google, uh, if you make a Google search, you can see that the, uh, SRW, uh, Substitute Integral Waveguide, sometimes we call it SRW, uh, actually goes beyond the uh, more than 1,000 paper per year uh, publication now, and uh, the things about uh, two, three years. Uh, then the, uh, you can see that the, uh, in the IEEE journal, we can have more than 100 papers publication per year now. So that the show suggests that the uh, very strong enthusiasm in the community for this, for this development. Well, such integral circuits, of course, allows us to the, make the complete integration of the planar and non-planar structures on the same dietary substrates and through the uh, same fabrication process. The uh, synthesized waveguide actually could be made very flexible and it could be compatible with any planar structures, as I said, is compatible with the uh, planar structures uh, the, uh, in many ways, for example, electrically, mechanically, thermally, and at the same time, the, uh, these structures present many interesting features. I will show something example, for example later on about the uh, planner and the miniaturization and how we can do the, uh, the uh, you know, the, like uh, create a new type of the electro-optical structures. And one of the major features of this subject in the waveguide, this allows us to create a self-packaging uh, geometry, which means that the structure will not affected by the environment and which is very important for some applications. Of course, all the today's uh, plan of uh, processing techniques such as uh, LTCC, MHMIC, uh, PCB, all kind of fabrication, uh, the process can be used. And also uh, some of the semiconductor process such as CMOS, 3.5, uh, all kind of the uh, technique can be used here. I just show you an example, for example. This is a typical PCB uh, SRW circuit uh, topology. I'm not going to talk about detail of this, it's just show that this, you know, the, this represent the top, uh, the uh, left side, you can see that this is a typical, uh, the uh, substitute integral waveguide, uh, the, um, the filter, but the interface with the, uh, the micro triple line. So it's both input output still with uh, the micro triple line, which allows you to make the integrations with other structures. And the, uh, the, the um, other, the two bottom structures actually is complete. The uh, radar structures, uh, one of the transceiver, one of the receiver, one of the, trans uh, the transmitter. And uh, so these two structures actually uh, integrate the both micro strip line, Kupin waveguide, and the substrate in integral waveguide. So all the structures are integrated together with the same geometry. So uh, I'm talk about quickly about basic design strategy and the building blocks. Of course, there's a lot of design techniques which has been published in the literature. So I'm not going to get into detail of that. Uh, so this, first of all, let me confirm that the such integral waveguide, which is actually support TE10 modes, like a rectangular waveguide, for example, in this case. Because of that, we can use equivalent models, which means that the such integral waveguide 
just use equivalent width of the waveguide, we can still use all the today's waveguide design equations. Uh, well, of course, you have to pay attention to that. There's always design, particular design issue there. So basically, all the waveguide equations, design equations, design techniques can be deployed in the design of the substrate integral waveguide components through the, uh, some equivalent models, okay? Of course, you can still use a full wave model to do the job, like the HFSS, CST, and many other packages. Uh, so these design equations show that the, and also the design charts here to show that you have to be careful, pay attention to the selection of the geometry. For example, the, uh, period, the, 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 the periodicity should be, uh, should be the larger than the diameter of the, um, uh, of the VR hole here. Actually, the VR can be made, you know, the metallic VR can be made uh, through this, uh, the, uh, you know, the, all, the, the, all the, the parameters to satisfy this equation, the four equation here. Um, so I will not talk about too much this, but to let you know that the, you can use the metallic VR to create a substrate integral wave guide. You can also use the, um, uh, the, uh, metall uh, the metallic uh, slot trunch to do the job. So basically, you create um, equivalent metallic wall to, do, uh, to create such a waveguide. So, um, so you can see that the, thanks to this integration into the uh, planar uh, substrate, we are able to create a lot of interesting interface between the conventional planar transmission line, such as microtube line, coupling waveguide, with the SRW structures. At the same time, you can create also CPW microtube line, or even waveguide with the uh, substrate integrated circuits uh, waveguide. Uh, like the subject integrated the image uh, integrated image guide and so on. So the uh, this is one of the typical performance you can see through the uh, input is a coupling wave guide, but output is a substrate integrated uh, wave guide. So you can see that the the turn loss can be made over broadband, and performance can be easily goes down to close to 30 dB. Uh, you know the, that's minus 30 dB in return loss and the different geometry is made possible. So here I will not talk about detail this. This is another uh, type of structures, which is very interesting to see this kind of the uh, conventional wave guide. You can design also multi-layer structures, for example, using top, bottom, three layers. Your middle layer is the, just the, you can create um, kind of the complete empty wave guide. It's a, we call it air wave guide. So the air field substrate integrated circuits, uh, so substrate wave guide can be developed in this case. Top button, you can use still use like a very cheap substrate like FR4 to create um you know the uh, waveguide, and in the middle you can create um kind of the air air uh, the uh, tube in this case. So and they can you can create a lot of interesting mechanism between the uh, substrate waveguide, the coupling waveguide. We call some for example comma line coupling. In this case, the same the, the substrate waveguide on top you can create a uh, 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 the uh, design, um, the uh, uh, coupling waveguide. In this case, you create a coupling between coupling waveguide mode and the substrate integrated uh, waveguide mode, which is TE10 mode. So basically, the same structure support two modes. One is CPW mode, uh, which is TE TEM mode. Another is the uh, TE10 mode. So you can create a multi coupling between the two modes, and you can create a the coupler, for example. So this is a zero dB, uh, one is three dB coupler, which is basically input power split into two modes. And you can also create a zero dB coupler, which means input power, for example, if you input a TE1, TEM mode, can be completely co converted into TE, uh, TE10 mode, which means the mo mode can be transferred from one to another. And also you can fold it all the waveguide into the multi-layers, in this case, we know that the waveguide, the cutoff frequency depends on the width okay, of your waveguide. So in this case, you can have the, um, you can fold those waveguides into the very, uh, the multi-layers, and then the, if you look into top, you can see that the, uh, the uh, structure becomes uh, the much smaller. So you can create a miniaturization in this case. And also, the waveguide can, can be cut into half. We call the half mode such in the waveguide. In this case, the structure half means that it's the, we can save 50% of the space. This we call the uh, half mode SRW. And also, you can create a um, mode composite structure, for example. In this case, you can see that the, uh, you can have the three layers, top uh, one, two, three layers. Uh, 
top layer and the bottom layer and the middle layer, for example, middle layer you can metallize around this meter um, and all the um, the uh, rectangular shaped structures. In this case, you can you can create um, rectangular structure line. It's a, the three layer rectangular structure line. But then uh, the, on, on the other hand, in the middle, in in the in, in the middle like tube, you can create um, a substrate integral waveguide. You can T one zero model. So the one structure one structure support the TEM mode, which is a structure line mode, another the waveguide mode, which is propagated in the middle. So this we call the mode composite waveguide. So the three layer structures support two modes, which can be, uh, can be uh, used simultaneously for low frequency, high frequency applications. And uh, also you can see this is uh, uh, the, from our EPFL group uh, developed uh, uh, the, um, the we call the TE10 mode. At the same time, the TE10 mode can be uh, the rotated in the the uh, become the uh, TE01 modes. And because of the TE10 mode, which is could be leakage into the substrates, this can, can be used on uh, air, for example, uh, the uh, perforated the uh, air slots. This prevents this mode. So in this case, you can create are two modes which can propagate along the channel simultaneously. So, of course, you can create also substrate integrate uh, non deviative dye to waveguide into the substrates. In this case, you can see that the, um, you know, the conventional, uh, the non deviative dye to waveguide, which is actually usually sandwiched between two metallic slots with a certain spacing requirement here, usually less than half uh, free space wavelengths. In this case, you can create a free half free space, but not uh, half wavelengths in the specific, specific uh, the, uh, the geometry, which is, uh, you know, the air hole field um, regions. In this case, you can create um, so-called substrate, uh, the integrate, substrate integrate non-ideative that we've got within substrates, within complete within substrates. Um, the uh, our group in Delft University actually created um, so-called silicon field uh, substrate integrate guide, which is actually used um, specific process which create um, the silicon field structures, which can be uh, the deposited onto different layers. And uh, this is very interesting, which is compatible with the silicon process. Well, let me talk about passive components. This is uh, one of the, um, the uh, for example, one of the uh, interesting geometry, uh, the direction coupler. So the traditional direction coupler can be made. And also you can see the non-traditional coupler, for example, you can see that this is an interesting structure to create a very compact geometry, which is not conventional. We call it the cross-form structures. And at the same time, you can create other different types of the, like the, the, in, the uh, quasi-optic uh, uh, direction couplers. Okay, I'm not talking about all detail here. Just uh, for example, this is a typical cross-coupled filter. The, uh, this is an interesting structure which allows you to create, um, for example, elliptic filter. So the so you can see that performance filter can be seen here through the, uh, the uh, SIW filter. So basically a filter at this frequency range KU band or K band, which is basically roughly the same as the conventional waveguide performance, not too bad actually. And in particular, you can create a very compact geometry and a very, at a low, very low cost. So the, one of the interesting uh, the, uh, feature of these structures also can be used in the design, for example, specific the geometry, uh, such as self-oscillating mixers. And in this case, you can create a um, filter at the input filter, it's I filter, but at the same time, you can use over mode uh, cup, uh, the uh, cavity to create um, the half frequency, half uh, I frequency resonator. In this case, you can create um, so-called the self-oscillating mixing geometry, which means you can create an oscillator, and or create a mixer simultaneously using the same active components, use, which can give you self oscillating mixer functions. So the well, this is one example, interesting example to show that the the 60 gigahertz active uh, substrate integrated image guide. So you can see the whole structures, uh, which is, can create a, is a single uh, the dielectric substrates. In this case, image guide, image guide can be used, and sometimes you can see that you have the uh, antenna, which is actually uh, it's, uh, the road antenna directly integrated into substrates. 
And then the, you can see that the, also um, the, um, some interesting application in the radiating antenna, uh, uh, antenna elements. Well, we'll go through quickly about what the antenna here. Um, for example, this is basic structures, uh, basic uh, antenna. So all the sort of antenna on the waveguide can be designed. You can also develop antibodal linear uh, taped sort of antennas. It looks like a VVD antenna, so you can input a substitution waveguide, but output is, it looks like a, a planar, planarized VVD antenna. And you can have a leaky wave antenna, of course, designed using uh, the special mode technique here. And so the, we want to show you a few interesting examples here. For example, the, this is also interesting antenna structure we call the paper waveguide. This is made by MAMS process. You can create um, using uh, the special technique, like the, using the, uh, instead of using VIA, using the uh, grounding pad, uh, the, uh, the, it looks like the metallic, uh, the uh, fiber type structures into the, um, the uh, in MAMS process. So this creates a very interesting uh, paper type of the uh, radiating elements based on the subject waveguide geometry. And this is a 60 gigahertz high gain antennas, for example. You can design very neat uh, the uh, millimeter of a high gain antenna array based on this technique because the, you can design very low cost of feed, low loss feed, and you can create a very good antenna with a good efficiency there. And uh, so, the, uh, for example, you can create a very good, uh, the interesting the reflector into substrates. In this case, you can create um, kind of the planar parabolic reflector antennas. In this case, a different input, for example, diff create different output of at the, these reflectors at a, at a certain distance. In this case, you can feed uh, antenna array. Then you can create a multi-beam antennas because different input conditions create different beams. And so that will be the very interesting uh, topology you can uh, imagine here. So the, uh, the, of course, the substrate integrated guy is a perfect candidate for the um, compact beam forming on uh, the network. You can use uh, that structure to design very compact uh, button metrics. So uh, let me also talk about some of the, uh, you know, the, um, the uh, so special structures, which are called the multi-layer three-dimensional expanded structures. Actually, multi-layer can be done easily with substrate in the waveguide, which means the waveguide can be designed layer by layer and uh, coupled through different uh, mechanisms. For example, you can design the structures through the um, VR contact, like a through silicon VR, or the feed-through couplings. So you can create different coupling mechanisms. You can create, use that for multi-band applications, broadband applications. You can create a lot of interesting uh, control, multi-layer, the uh, feeding and uh, multi, uh, the different coupling mechanism. And uh, so the multi-layer can be developed for the, for example, one example here, a very interesting example, you can create um, uh, so-called the vertical Yagi antenna. So in this case, antenna designed vertically. For example, this antenna is a four by four Yagi antenna. And so you have the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, like an active uh, section here, then you have the driver, reflector, driver, and you have the, all these directors. And but with a single, uh, the, uh, with a multi-layer, but then the, you can see that there's a single, a very, very uh, small uh, footprint. And also you can design the subject integrate uh, waveguide horn here and using waveguide process. So, um, like, like I think it's, it's you, can, you, you can see that the, these multi-layer waveguide structures are coupled with the current today's technique give you a lot of freedom to design the structure as you want. And also you can use the same structure to design uh, different uh, functions. And also you can create a so-called Lego type of structure. For example, you can design the base, base substrates. You can create a lot of sort of metrics. In this case, you can create a lot of the so-called building elements. And you building different building elements put together can create different functions and different, different the topology. So this is called the Lego process. I'm not going to talk about the tall things. For example, this is a typical three-dimensional FLW FIMI taped sort of antenna array, which would create a very good high gain antennas with good performance. This is a typical Lego design application here. So, and then the, you can see some of the interesting Lego process can be used uh, to design, for example, the uh, vertical and the horizontal, uh, the polarized high gain antennas. 
So this is a really Lego design here. So you, it's, of course, this three-dimensional design looks quite different from the conventional design here, but it uh, can be made very easily for many applications. So you can see the flexibility of these uh, structures, but at the same time, you can create a different so-called uh, the mode splitting. For example, you can create a mode. The different mode can be used for at a different orientation. This is so-called the, because of the thanks to this uh, uh, three-dimensional geometry, we can create a um, single mode which can feed uh, two polarizations. This is called an integrated dual polarization thanks to this three-dimensional design here. Um, so let's look at this also the, um, some, uh, the substrate integrated systems. The system of substrates basically is the really biggest the, uh, you know, the, uh, feature in, the, in this uh, tech applications because the whole system can be integrated into single substrates. Right now, you can imagine that the a single substrate, you can design all antennas. For example, two antennas can be designed side by side with a very minimized coupling between them. So it's very, very interesting, which is, cannot be done with co uh, conventional micro line. So this allows you to design highly isolated dual antenna systems, such as the integrated FMCW radar systems on substrates. And you can also see the such designs through the one example here we call the active, the uh, 60 gigahertz smart array systems, which means that all the antenna beam forming network, uh, the uh, the uh, all the other structures uh, can be integrated into something, uh, same substrates, uh, in, even including the uh, basic the uh, you know the uh, uh, elements there. So. Uh, so this is uh, one example, so called six port transceiver system on substrates. This is just layout, show you the complexity of the structures. At the same time, the design could be made very easy because everything can be made in the same, same process, same fabrication process, and actually can be made also with multi-layer. Uh, so one of the um, interesting also thing we want to talk about here is the electroptic and terrorist, uh, the technology here. So I want to show a few examples. It's difficult to cover everything because so many interesting developments there, so many papers. Um, so for example, this is an interesting application for the electro-optic devices. Of course, here's just illustration. Conventionally, the electro-optic devices are made through the micro tube line coupling waveguide because of the electric, which actually serve as an electrode. In this case, electrode is replaced by the waveguide. So we create an electrical field which interacts with the optical fields through this waveguide field. In this case, we, we can call this electrode-free uh, structures or charging wave uh, electrode-free uh, uh, geometry. So the, in this case, you can use waveguide modes for the TE1 modes will be common mode because in this case, of course, you have to design carefully. You can use optic array to create a more interaction between electro, uh, you know, electro-optic interactions. You can enhance such interactions through the um, array design. And the interesting thing, that enough, uh, interesting thing here, you can, you can have the TE10 mode, which is common mode, you can design as the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, conventional phase, uh, phase uh, you know, like a phase modulation. But at the same time, you can create a TE20 mode, which is a, a high, a first higher order mode of the waveguide, which is actually create a push-pull structures. So the push-pull allows you to make the Maxana modulations, which means use different modes, waveguide different, use different waveguide modes you can create different functions. Why the phase modulation for fundamental mode, TE20 mode will become, will be uh, to use, to, to, uh, will be, could be used to develop the Maxanda amplitude modulation. So that's very interesting to see the different application here. And so uh, sometimes you can see that the such waveguide can be used to even through the, some interesting process for very high frequency application, such as terahertz, sub-millimeter wave application, for example, uh, the group at the University of Leeds uh, to develop, uh, use the um, photoimaging process to develop this uh, sub-millimeter wave uh, waveguide structures as a bandpass filter. And also, you can see the bandpass filter can be also deployed using the CMOS process. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting development there. Well, you can see this is uh, also can be uh, developed into the so-called multi-layer, uh, the, uh, the photoconductor-based uh, photo the, uh, the structures, for example, using photo-induced plasma wall to create um, so-called optic-controlled, optically configurable 
uh, structures. This was developed by the uh, group at the Imperial College of London. So the, this is a very interesting, exciting, excite, uh, you know, the uh, excited development in the field to do the job for the terahertz, and also you can use even the CMOS process to do the job. So there are lots of interesting, uh, the CMOS uh, the process can be directly used to design waveguides. This is very important development because at the waveguide, uh, at usually at the frequency such as high frequency, we cannot the, uh, you know, use the conventional process. So the CMOS process could be very useful. This creates a low, low cost millimeter wave terahertz the applications. So, um, of course, there's a lot of interesting challenges there, but it gave us also great opportunity. So I'm going to talk about a few things here. For example, you can use the eventual nanostructured uh, the, uh, technique to, to synthesize uh, low loss material. This is very interesting. Also, you can synthesize the special parameter, parameter agility, and also you can develop tunable materials. So that's a lot of interesting new material can, materials can be deployed in the structure integrated waveguide design. You can, of course, you can see that you can design traveling wave electro-optic devices, Lots of interesting thing you can do. You can design, develop a so-called mixed integration, which means all the waveguide, all the single waveguide, like single substrate, can support a multi-waveguide, like the Deutsch waveguide, the Campbell waveguide, all kind of waveguide can be substrate supported by sing, same process within single single layer or multi-layer. Of course, high density multi-layer integration is guaranteed here. But sometime in the future, we will be able to develop active nonlinear waveguide. This is something which should be studied in the future. It's very important for us to have the active circuits involved in the waveguide design. And of course, once we have this, we'll be able to develop whole system uh, which can be made in, in a monolithic way. So we could be have a monolithic integration of all circuits on the substrate, including antennas. Of course, we can develop larger scale millimeter wave terahertz integrations. And of course, we can bridge the gap. And of course, the, between the electronics and photonics, and of course, we should consider all other phenomena, such as plasmonic phenomena at high frequency, because these structures support the interesting applications of this uh, range. Um, so the, one of the interesting thing we can see that the, um, through this is that the, um, for example, uh, let's go back quickly. This is a, one example show that the uh, smart advanced material integration, for example, you can develop uh, the uh, so-called tunable waveguide through the uh, tunable materials on, uh, on into substrates. This is just one example to show you. So if you look into evolution, we can look at the from first generation is a waveguide, but it's from second to third, fourth generation, everything is based on the microcube line, planar circuits. What's the next? We believe with substrate integral circuits will present the next generation ICs because this is a mixed waveguide with uh, the conventional planar substrates. A planar substrate with planar circuits. So the, this allows us to create a um, uh, universal integration of all kinds of structures, planar, non-planar, uh, metallic, dielectric, everything can be made into the same substrate with the same platform. So this is great, the, the interesting the development in our field. So um, now let's conclude my talk. So of course, substrate circuits create um, uh, interesting low loss options, but same time high density integrations for all kind of applications from microwave, millimeter terahertz, photonics, and this integration can be made in different technique, different uh, form. For example, we can use waveguide to create a substrate integral waveguide, or the Deutsch waveguide can be also developed and integrated into different form. And eventually, in the future, we can develop system on substrates for different applications, and potentially we can uh, deploy a semiconductor and smart materials into substrates for many future applications. And definitely, this allows us to bridge the gap between electronic photonics for megahertz through the terahertz innovation discovery, particularly technology gap. Right now, the substrate integrated guide circuits can, have been shown for very low frequency applications up to the uh, 700 megahertz. For, for even for high frequency already shown up to terahertz, few terahertz already done. So I want to, uh, uh, of course, um, I just want to here to acknowledge uh, many people who contribute to this work, particularly my students, uh, my research fellows, uh, research associate, a fellow, and who made a lot of contributions 
to this uh, presentation. And of course, uh, financial support from the Canadian government and the Quebec government, we also acknowledge here. Many uh, collaborators also have made interesting contributions through different uh, exchange and uh, the joint work there. Of course, I want to thank them for all the contribution here. So I thank you all of you for listening to my talk. I know the time very short, so I have to, you know, the uh, just uh, the go through this quickly. But a lot of interesting excitement here. Hopefully, you'll enjoy my presentation. Thank you. Great, thank you, Kay. That was an impressive uh, amount of research that your group has done, and excellent talk. Thank you. <clears throat> So now it's time for our question and answer session. Uh, before we start, please remember that you can still submit questions through the Q&A panel, and please don't forget to hit submit on that. Okay, Kay, are you ready for some questions? Sure, sure. Okay, sure. Uh, so first question here uh, is with regards to um, driving antennas. So is it recommended to use SIW to directly excite an antenna, or is it better to have a transition in between there, and how does that impact the loss, uh, especially when you get to higher frequencies? Well, this is a good question, and uh, you can just, it's depending on your design. I prefer to minimize any transition, any the, uh, you know, the uh, conversion there, because the, this uh, transition creates additional loss. So it's better to have the uh, waveguide, which can be used to directly drive this, the, uh, the uh, antennas. You have different way. Of course, uh, SRW can be designed as an antenna itself. You don't need to do any, you know, the uh, driving there. So that's one type. Okay. So the, and second, you can use the SRW to drive the circuit, such as the uh, Yagi antenna, you know, for example. So uh, because uh, uh, the uh, SRW itself, you can create a lot of slots, so it's very easy to to use that to drive. You don't need any additional uh, transition there. Okay. Uh, I think the subject of loss comes up a little bit. So, uh, can you comment on on the loss of these structures, maybe compared to other comparable transmission line or waveguide structures? And okay. Describe what, what yeah. dominates that loss, any, any advancements on that front, et cetera. Well, of course, because of the design range, it can, be, can cover whole frequency range from 300 megahertz to a few terahertz right now with the current processing technique and the design technique. Uh, the loss depending on the, uh, uh, the, on the thickness and also uh, the choice of substrate, which means the quality of the dielectric material itself. I would say that the, if you choose the thicker structure, you can reduce the conductor loss because of the, uh, you know, the, the, the current effect. And same time, uh, you have to choose the high quality dielectric materials, of course, there. Um, the, this loss compared to microchip line, for example, is about 10, ti uh, the, uh, the 10 times better. For example, microchip line, the, I will use Q factor to describe the loss because the loss, you can, it's difficult to say, how, how, how the loss looks like sometimes. Uh, so for the for, for the microchip line, loss could be like the Q factor, like uh, 50, for example. Okay, uh, and then the micro the, if you use same substrates, you can design the uh, you can design the uh, SRW structures, which ends up, ends up with the 500 or even better than 500, uh, uh, you know, for Q factors. And the waveguide could end up another. Uh, 10 times better than SRW could be like uh, 5,000, okay? Of course, in this case, you don't have the uh, dielectric material involved. You have the uh, very, you know, conventional waveguide structures. So, so what I'm saying here that the, 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 the so the SRW structures, uh, the loss performance in terms of Q factors here is better, at least 10 times better than the micro line you can expect. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, so with regards to other materials that could be used for uh, substrate integrated waveguides, what, what comments do you have about the tunable materials that have been demonstrated in the SIW? Yes, actually I show one example in the slide 61. Actually, this is one of our patents. Uh, the, uh, this is we use a liquid crystal 
materials uh, used in the uh, V-band and E-band design. So this is really made met with tunable materials. Um, so the uh, you can use also other materials such as uh, uh, ferrites. We use or we developed uh, ferrites, uh, the uh, tunable uh, structures in, 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 in our group. Uh, basically, you can you can develop all kind of the uh, the tunable materials uh, in the in waveguide. The only issue I want to uh, you know you have to uh, you have to be careful here is that the because the microtube line, as I said earlier, you have very strong current singularity, field singularity along the structures. So eventually, uh, the design for uh, tunable devices for microtube line is not really useful for the waveguide here. So, you know, waveguide, you have much more uniform, I'm not saying complete uniform because it's a new without field distribution. So the field distribution is even, of course, is much uniform than the microtube line. You don't have the field singularity within waveguide. So you can you can use um, the, you know, interesting, uh, the features, uh, this is interesting for the tunable devices applications because of the, um, you know, the, uh, you can, uh, use uniform field to control the circuits and so on. And or you can create a high power devices applications, which is, cannot be done for microchip line. Okay, high power. So so there actually is another question here. Uh, you showed a, a half mode structure and uh, so there's a question about the power handling capacity of the half mode versus the full mode equivalents. Uh, uh, full mode, yeah, you're right. Uh, full mode should be better than the half mode because the you know the volume is uh, just uh, uh, higher. Usually, uh, you know, our conventional wisdom that the uh, power is a little bit proportional to the volume. Okay, well, of course, not very true, but if for the uniform feed distribution, such a waveguide, which is actually true. Okay, so the but of course, this is really depending on the mode behavior there. So uh, for the half mode structures, yeah, power handling capability will be lower than the, uh, the conventional uh, SRW structures. It's just a follow-up to, to that question. Out, out of curiosity, have you run into any power issues with power handling issues with these circuits at all? Well, we we published a paper on the power handling capability issue, and also we made a lot of tests on the thermal issue there. Actually, I, many years ago, I presented a workshop on the film uh, aspects of the uh, waveguide. Uh, we don't have any trouble so far. I think it's, uh, this structure is perfect for many of the current applications, such as 5G, um, you know, mini metal wave rate applications for automotive radar system. And in this case, power handling usually limited to the, you know, the, I think below the, let's say, um, dozen watts, okay, we talk about that. So it can be used, it can, can propagate here. So it's, we don't have any trouble for that. And, and that was in, even in PCB technologies? Yeah, it's in PCB technology. Because as I said earlier, the field distribution here is much uniform than the microstrip line. So that's power handling capability is much, much better than microstrip line. Even in PCB technology. So uh, in L yeah. as, as opposed to, say, LTCC or something like that. Yeah, LTCC, uh, well, of course, depending on the uh, so-called thickness of the uh, waveguide. If you, have the, if you want to have increase the, uh, the uh, loss performance at the same time increase the power handling capability, it's better to use thicker substrates. So I cannot say which structure gives you better performance, but this is a general rule. If you want to design higher power handling uh, uh, structures, then the, you have to uh, the uh, you have to use the uh, thicker substrates. Okay. Uh, so I guess we don't want this to turn into any kind of commercial. But do you have any recommended CAD tools for designing SIW uh, for printed circuit boards and things of that nature? Well, this is a very good question actually, um, because so far I know that many companies start to work on this. Actually, there's a lot of commercial products on the. SRW structure, but they're not selling, they just integrate into their own product. I do know that there's some company in Europe, a company in US and uh, Japan and also in other countries has al already uh, been done this. I do know they have in-house design tool there. There's no really unified or uh, commercial uh, package on this, on this aspect. Uh, I do know that many of these uh, uh, commercial package 
uh, such uh, I wouldn't comment on that, but there's a um, there's some package some package which is the try to incorporate the uh, SRW elements in the design too there. So there's a, some kind of building blocks which can be used. But uh, I expect this uh, package will be out or be coming out, let's say, hopefully in the next uh, two, three years. Two years, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. And uh, so let's go ahead and, and we'll, we'll take our last question here. And this is, um, I think, aimed at maybe some of the future directions. Uh, you mentioned uh, having nonlinear materials, nonlinear structures. So could you provide a little more comments or insight into that? Any thoughts or uh, applications that you, that you are envisioning for, uh, for that, uh, that type of structure? Yeah, for example, you can use the uh, semiconductor uh, substrates. Uh, of course, in this case, you have to use some uh, insulating layers, and uh, you can create, apply uh, you know, a strong electric field to create a nonlinear effect there. Uh, but what I'm saying only here is I really want to develop nonlinear devices, which in the waveguide form, potentially we can, uh, you know, replace completely those current, uh, the transistor, those type of things. Remember one thing is that the current, the active circuits in terms of the diodes, like a uh, short key diodes, and also transistor, like the FET type structure, is the lambda element. So it's uh, come from the low frequency. So here we address the uh, new type of structure, which is actually not really a lambda element, it's a waveguide. So the uh, lambda element, is, you know, actually is good, very good for this, uh, uh, the uh, micro triple line uh, coupling waveguide because this supports the TEM modes, which is actually can be defined, uh, can be uh, can be used to define the uh, voltage current very well. That's why we have a good interface. But because if you use waveguide, you don't have uh, such feature there, so you have to consider the new type of the let's say, active devices. Well, I would say, let me joke for that, uh, this could be Nobel Prize winner project in the future, which means somebody could come up with something which looks like a, a feature amplifier, you know, feature the, uh, the, uh, uh, the control devices, all the active devices which, can, which we have been seeing in the, uh, through the dial of the transistor, which you can see also through waveguide technique, then the, that's what will be liberationary. That sounds, uh, that sounds exciting and intriguing. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid we're out of time. We do still have a number of questions, uh, and I believe the presenter will follow up on those unanswered questions offline. As we stated earlier, this session will be archived at mtt.org. All registrants will get an email reminder uh, with the website address when it is available. For attendees that would like to receive PDH credits, please follow the link in the webcast view and use the code that is provided on the last slide of this presentation, the one that's presented right there, right now. Once again, I'd like to thank Professor Wu for an excellent presentation. Our thanks also go out to National Instruments, who is our sponsor for this webinar. And special thanks to our audience for joining us today. We hope you found today's event valuable and that you'll return for future IEEE MTTS Society webcast, webcasts. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you.